Hi, I'm Greg Ninnis for interest.co.nz and today I'm joined by Professor John Tukey, who's Head of the Department of the Built Environment at Auckland University of Technology and also Head of the Centre for Urban Built Environment New Zealand, which is a research arm of the university there. Welcome, John. Good to see you. Now, you obviously have a, an interest and expertise in the housing markets and how they function and all that type of thing. Um, and you don't think that the private construction market as it is at the moment on its own is going to be able to solve Auckland's <coughs> housing supply problems, is that right? Um, broadly, yes. Um, the, the problem at the moment is the market is set up such that the, uh, the principal mechanism uh, of uh, procuring houses is an individual. As an individual, everybody um, uh, arrives at the marketplace randomly into the market everybody builds as they want to build. Everybody is driven to build the largest possible house and the smallest yeah. possible section in order to get maximum residual value. Right. As it stands at the moment, the the affordable uh, branch of the, uh, of the market, which is in the 500,000 type uh, bracket, which we regularly hit, refer to as an affordable home, is actually not ever going to be produced in any significant numbers as a result of how the market is structured. It's just not going to happen. Right. So the builders and developers and all of that go for where they can make the most money. And at absolutely. the moment, they can make the most money with the higher price properties. Uh, uh, and that's all that we're getting. If you ever procure a house, you'll know that uh, the first thing you, you'll... Um, if you want to minimise your unit uh, cost per square metre, then the first thing they'll do is... I recommend building single story mm -hmm. rather than multi story or you know high density uh, wise um, if you actually build high density then you significantly ramp up the per square meter costs so again the individual purchaser is never going to specify a high density house and if right. that's what we need as a market then you have to start asking the question obviously uh, well how do we leverage more uh, housing product of the appropriate type, right. which rather than just houses per se. Okay, and this is probably why, you know, when we <clears> saw the last apartment bu building boom from the late 90s to into the mid um, 2000s, they were the smaller, more affordable apartments, and the ones we're seeing now tend to be larger, more luxurious apartments aimed mainly at people who already have a home which is might be worth one or two million dollars and they're thinking of downsizing yeah. into a apartment. They're yeah. not affordable they're, housing. They're, they're not affordable housing in any, uh, in any, by any stretch of the imagination and actually if you see the special housing areas, whatever it may be, th around the, uh, the place, you can go to any of them. The, uh, the sections that get built out first are always the standalone sections which are uh, re uh, in effect zone for lower density uh, the high density stuff because of the additional costs associated with building high density houses in terms of um, uh, just actually providing um, scaffolding for example um, as well as all the logistics and all the additional costs of producing multi multi uh, uh, unit uh, developments are always built last mm. so we're you know all that we're doing is we're front end loading the whole uh, exercise in with the type of housing which is entirely inappropriate if you look at the census data uh, over the last 20 years, the bulk of houses in uh, Auckland are primarily four and five bedroom properties. The yeah. numbers that are actually three bedroom, which is in the bracket of affordable, it's just negligible right. by comparison. So how do we go about trying to alter those metrics, if you like, so that we're mm. building not just more houses, but more affordable houses? Um, well, if you accept the premise that the market itself is never going to um, affect the, uh, the the game per se because obviously everything's structured to actually drive four and five bedroom type properties, larger houses. Yeah. Then obviously the next, the only net major player that's going to be involved, either from a policy perspective or a funding perspective, ends up being the government. That's just the, these are the guys who can actually uh, make the make the difference in right. effect. Um, from a planning perspective, you can potentially. Uh, tweak things so that you zone areas only for high density housing, whatever it may be, which will to a certain degree um, um, leverage the market, maybe. Okay. However, again, even with that, um, the tendency is always going to be, you'll have a, a whole raft of appeals with people saying, but I wish to build my five bedroom dream home on this whatever you get yeah. the same sort of thing the provision of land per se is not the is not the be all and end all doesn't matter what anybody says i mean we're sitting in a studio here just across the road is a, a very very large section that's been vacant i know for a fact for 
a number of years. Mm -hmm. The land's there, mm -hmm. but again, the impetus to build there in a high density way is just not there. Right. Um, so in that sort of uh, context, then obviously government has to step in or you know, that's a potential route. Traditionally, that used to be in the form of obviously council housing type of stuff. And I'm not necessarily saying that council housing is the way to go. However, um, if you want to create a, um, a stock of the more affordable type of homes rather than sitting and hoping and keeping your fingers crossed, then really you have to leverage outcomes rather than inputs. Right. So you have to actually incentivize builders to build in a particular way. Mm. What does that actually mean? The, most, um, the, the way it's been handled in the past is to actually... Um, uh, as I say, um, front end load the whole exercise of, um, of, uh, of providing more stock by specifying a, an outcome parameter of X number of thousands of homes in a particular district or area, right. um, which, you know, as we all know now, have subsequently been so sold off as state assets anyway. Right. <laughs> so they end up in the <laughs> private sector anyway. <laughs> but it's just a case, you know, I know it sounds... So it's the case of... Uh the government in one form or another, either the government or a government agency, whether right. it's Housing New Zealand or whether it's done through yeah. the council, saying yeah. we want to develop X number of affordable houses that have to be this type of property in this area. By a date. By a certain <laughs> date and then contracting that work out that, to... That's absolutely. To, how, would they then, how would you then fill those, once they're built, fill those um, homes with properties? Would it be done uh, with people at least? How would, would it be done through the social agencies, the way it's done now? Well, uh, one of the ways that it's happened uh, in development uh, terms in places like the UK, for example, is a classic example, is with housing association type um, uh, mechanism. Now, a housing association is a sort of quasi-council body, and it um, part funds uh, properties and it co-owns the equity in the property. With, so with the resident, with the resident. So all of a yeah. sudden, you can now take, you can have ownership of a property. You pay a, a, a nominal rent for the the government part, okay. as it were, and then you pay, um, you, you actually pay the residual as a mortgage. Mm -hmm. So in effect, what this allows people to so do, so people could go in and, and get a forty percent stake, say, forty percent in, in a home that was whatever. owned by the housing association. That, that's right, and they can buy themselves out, or they can, that, or uh, sorry, they can pay the way out, or alternatively, they can uh, they can buy ultimately as many do in the in that in that sort of model um, following the conservative government back in the, the UK uh, what they did was they uh, gave people the right to purchase uh, council properties and mm -hmm. and, and they the follow through the same principle basically okay. uh, uh, um, going through a phased uh, ownership of a, of a property okay <laughs> so in the UK that's done through local councils mm -hmm. here we don't have quite the same tradition of, of course, councils yeah. being involved it's been done through housing New Zealand a national body but it, it could happen through an organization like that as well or um, a new semi governmental organization yeah. that was set up. I mean the, the issue is is all about cash flow mm -hmm. ultimately um, as we stand the scalability of the industry as a whole is not substantial. 98.75% of the industry is one person uh, organizations. Mm -hmm. There's a tiny proportion who subcontract the rest. Yeah. Okay. So we don't have a very great amount of scalability. Most builders, if you said, right, you want to double your outcome, that means mm -hmm. that they build three homes instead of one and a half mm. in a year. You know, this is, this is the sort of level we're talking about. Okay. So they don't have scalability. The only way that scalability comes in is larger organisations, you know, the usual um, suspects in, in the New Zealand context. But there's no reason at all why you couldn't have a public-private partnership type arrangement mm. and a, you know, co-owning of equity and a yeah. section that can be, um, you know, developed uh, for a profit for the developer, whatever it may be, in order to develop you know, leveraged outcomes. Okay, so they basically then, what's needed is the willingness of government at perhaps central and local level to say, all right, we're going to build 5,000 new homes over there, yeah. and to then deal with some larger companies, building companies, who would have the scale to take on such yeah. a project, and maybe um, seeing a, a pipeline of work would mm. allow them to invest in things like modular housing. Absolutely, and, 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 like and this uh, at the moment we don't, we, we just do not have the scale for mm -hmm. for that. Every house gets built l literally from first principles, yes. and it, all you got to do is look. You go into any major one of the group builders mm. or who build, the, um, you know, something over a hundred houses a year yeah. is large. Um, they've got 
30 different designs mm. that well, straight away mm. you don't have the scales and economies of scale associated with um, creating the same basic design again and again and again right so you end up with a, a, a situation whereby um, you know the the investments never going to be made until such time as there's a there's a market there where somebody mm. says well actually we want 5,000 blah whatever and then all of a sudden um, as you say, volumetric type construction, prefabricated yeah. construction. Oh, and by the way, even the word prefabrication makes people go on, on edge at that point. But if you want affordable homes built yeah, at, sure. at a pace, then it's, it has to work. We, we do have a history of that where, I mean, when I moved to Auckland in the, <coughs> in the 1960s and the big suburbs were being developed out on the North Shore and other places yeah. around the region, um, you know, Keith Hay homes and people like that were... They, whack a, a yeah. house together in the yard and transport it that's over right. to yeah. wherever and these subdivisions were rolled out fairly quickly. That's, that's the that's sort right. of thing we need again, do you think? The, um, it certainly has the this scope for it with the current growth profiles. But, I mean, we have to be somewhat careful because, you know, so much of the current crisis, and we use the word crisis not unreasonably, mm. um, is being driven primarily by in, in investment. Yeah, it's an investor market that's mm -hmm. uh, dealing with stuff. If you look again, dealing with the statistics of the uh, that comes directly from the census, if you look at the total number of houses that have been that are uh, commissioned uh, annually, um, the vast majority of those over the last twenty years have segued almost directly into the investor market. Yes. In nineteen ninety one, it was uh, seventy two percent of homes nationally were were owner occupied. In Auckland, it was 68%, so we saw, saw the beginnings of it there. Scroll forward to the modern day, and you're dealing with, 20 years later, you're dealing with um, uh, something like 56% are owner-occupied. Mm -hmm. And bearing in mind how many have been added to the total housing stock over that period of time, you can very quickly demonstrate the fact that whether or not you know, it's first-time owners all, or not, it's all segued straight into the owner-occupancy, uh, sort of buy-to-let market. Yes, that's right. And presumably, the, if... Um, if the state is to get involved in this sort of development activity, that could be low, medium, high rise. It, is, it wouldn't have to be one particular type Ab of housing. It would be whatever is most efficient to build uh, absolutely, and get yeah. people into their homes. There are a few technical issues with regard to uh, changing codes for 3604, 3603, which are related to timber mm. frame buildings. Um, they need to be revised to allow sort of maybe three-storey tenement, four-storey tenements in timber. If you can get to that stage, mm. then all of a sudden, then you've got the sorts of solutions which can go very quickly. But um, if if there is this sort of large-scale mm. development taking place that mm. is a government initiative, yep. um, presumably that supply coming onto the market in a reasonable, a large quantity of supply in a reasonably short space of time satisfying the market from the bottom mm. out, rather than satisfying yeah. it from the top which is what's happening now would how would that affect the overall supply and prices of uh, properties well you're already starting to see a tailing off of, of yields on on properties at the moment there was a report that came out just last week that, mm. um, that highlighted this um, the prospect of additional um, uh, of additional uh, stock going into that sort of sector of the market, which is traditionally um, um, based on um, the, uh, uh, the sort of lower end of the market for people who typically rent. Um, the adi that additional stock will, will uh, or the prospect of it, will most certainly start to affect yields because all of a sudden people will be stepping back and saying, well, actually, I can wait until this is yeah. the case. As your yields drop, because the yields are already at just nothing levels. Absolutely. Because investors are just... Yeah, they, it's, it's all about they, capital growth. Yes, and that, that's and right. That's and, but the, but the, the thing is, with so many folks, uh, actually there's an awful lot of investors who they are literally just, try, you know, from a cash flow perspective, just covering their costs. Yeah. Uh, all it's going to take is a minor uh, correction in interest rates, minor upward tilt, and all of a sudden folks are going to be underwater, and this is... You know the the very fact that we start to affect the market in this way will start to make investment property ownership a less attractive proposition than it was, right? And it has been, which will start to affect affordability in a positive sense. Okay. Uh, but that's the nature of the beast. You know, okay. you can't have everything. You can't have high yields and 
affordable housing. It's, mm. you know, it's, so it's, those things would tend to go back to their long-term averages. Yes, yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, it, if you're a batting person, it's classic statistical arbitrage. You know, you, you short the stuff that's on that's uh, that's overpriced and long the stuff that's underpriced, and um, and this is this will start to affect. Okay. Great. Well, thanks for coming in today, John. No I appreciate you talking to us. I'm Greg Minnis for interest.co.nz, and I've been talking today with John Tukey, Professor of Built Environment for Auckland University of Technology.